39, you're watching and listening to Breakfast with Anne and Martin. Yeah, shall we bring you up to date then with today's newspapers? We'll have a quick look at the front pages. First of the Daily Telegraph, leading with Keir Starmer not bringing back HS2, even if he does win the next general election. Sounds like another U-turn there. And The Guardian says September's heat was out of control, according to stunned climate scientists. In the mail, a terrible story. Nurses drugged stroke patients for an easy life life on an NHS ward. Easy life for them, mm. not the patients. And finally, changing the tone, the soar away star says the average Brit now has just 3.7 true friends as the UK is hit with the rise of Billy No Mates. Well, <laughs> joining us to go through some of the day's headlines now, Deputy Political Editor at the Mail on Sunday, Anna Mikolova, and broadcaster and journalist Andy Jones. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> what do we kick off with? Oh, yes. Now, this is something that I don't want to talk about, but except you feel you have to. Mm. And this is the rise of bed bugs, Andy. They're apparently prevalent in Paris, but they're threatening to come here. They're already here. They're already here, Anne. I tell you, I've steamed my suit twice today. Oh, I, good. I didn't, want, I didn't want anything catching on me. But, um, look, in, there have been an explosion in France over the last 10, 15 years of bed bug instances. Apparently more than one in 10 French homes have had a bed bug infestation since 2017. And we're watching video for and the sake of people listening on the radio. You wouldn't want to see it anyway. Uh, <laughs> but it's... It's bed bugs on trains yeah, in France. On the metro in Paris. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And also, in the, a lot of the metro trains in Paris, they don't even necessarily have a lot of fabric on them. A lot of them are those hard plastic seats. Mm. So quite... I mean, it's not a case of when they're coming here. They're going to be. It's, going to, it's when we, we are going to have them here, right? Because huge numbers of people are using the Eurostar. Huge number of people are using, uh, you know, transport suitcases, clothes, getting things backwards and forwards from Paris. And also, we're seeing, you know, huge numbers of people coming in. Let's say other ways across the Channel yeah. into Britain. And um, yeah, I mean, we managed to wipe out most of our bed bug instances in the UK. Yes, because we've had outbreaks after, before, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. After the Second World War, they used something called DDT to, to explosively get rid of them. But uh, apparently the bedbugs are now resistant to that chemical. Mm -hmm. And there's been this explosion in their appearance everywhere. And we're warned to check under your mattress, check your bed sheets, uh, check your suitcases. One guy's saying, don't leave your suitcases under the bed because they go from your suitcase to your bed and back again. I don't know where I'm supposed to keep mine in my tiny London flat. But never mind. Maybe On top of the wardrobe. I'll just get rid of my suitcase and never yeah. travel anywhere. It sounds safer. And Andy, uh, another un unwanted invasion from France. That if they came over in dinghies, they'd no doubt get put in hotels. But interestingly, joking aside, this is quite a story in France because this week um, a sports presenter um, called Pascal Pro Proud said that this, he blamed this on immigrants coming to France oh, who were bringing them with them. He's been cancelled for as a result of saying this. But do we know... Why they come in, in particular into France and then onto us? Where they come in from and why? No, I mean, it's been, I mean, the nature of international travel now. We're travelling absolutely all over the place, and it's, it, it is a bit unfair to say they're coming from illegal immigrants who. who it, it, it's not a specific thing. Um, I, I think it's, it's perhaps a little bit unfair that it's been cancelled for highlighting this. And mm -hmm. uh, but uh, again, I, I'm not sure you can entirely blame on illegal immigrants. These are these are things that happen with. No, but I, the trouble is, remarks like that can almost be an incitement to hatred. Well, that's what's happened. They? Yeah, and he's been he's been slammed for saying it. But he's kind of drawn the dots between you know immigrants coming in from countries where they are more prevalent. It's created a huge national conversation. Why don't we want something that does not making people's skin crawl? Listen to the papers, or maybe well, it makes you itch, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Start talking about it, and, and, and you, you know, you get um, so many, so many moths now. I've had, I spent eight. Yeah, quid, I've 15... been battling moths for last year. So I don't want to start battling bed bugs yeah. as well. I spent fifteen quid yesterday on, on lavender moth. Repellent. Oh, put, put water those sort of moths. Moths, mean, clothes moths. I'm sorry, yeah, let's move on. Is it, does it freak you out, Anna, this idea of bed bugs? Bed bugs, yeah, but I'm sort of used to it. These, not, not bed bugs, um, but I remember going to New York and there used to always be um, bed bug infestations That's in New York. And the advice was always in any hotel you were in to check under the mattress. So yes. yeah. I'm, I'm prepared, I'm ready. <laughs> in New York, they've had problems with it. It's decimated. I mean, New York house prices are very expensive, but it's, it's really reduced house prices mm. in certain areas and certain buildings because they've had a 
a bed bug in They're very, very difficult. It's a financial cost. To and they, they say, I mean, there, there's lots of different tips and tricks on, on what to do about it. But if you try to counteract it yourself, mm. the chances are you'll only destroy about 90% of them. If you leave any behind, they will multiply yeah. immediately. So you're, you're, you're never going to beat them unless doubles. you get a professional in. Yeah, the population of them doubles every two weeks in your house. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Yeah. Anyway, it's changed. Come yeah, on. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're going to be scared of crumbs that they see on the floor because they need some bugs. Yes, yeah. it's Anna. happened before, and you, there's, no, there's no point in getting freaked out. No. And a bit of politics. Um, Rishi Sunak gave his um, conference highlight speech, of course, this week. Has it had any effect in the polling? Well, this is the thing. Uh, hopes of a big conference bounce um, hasn't re haven't really happened. So the Times is a big story on uh, the fact that readers haven't really haven't really warmed to Sunak off the back of this speech. Uh, and, and it was seen as a really make or break moment. I mean, he's only got a few of them left before an election. He's got this, mm. he's got the King speech coming up. But you know, I was in the room and yeah, he announced quite a few things and uh, quite a few new, very big things. But the showstopper was Penny Morden in terms of actual rhetoric and impact in the room. But she was weird, wasn't yeah. she? I mean, she said the same phrase about ten times over. Uh, fighting. Oh, like a military about standing up and fighting or yeah. something. And it was very weird, I thought. The crowd loved it. She said it didn't. Yes, yeah, yes, the crowd loved it. Did. I think it's one of these things that works really, really well in the room. And then actually you watch it dispassionately when you're eating and you, tea and you, toast She probably home. thought, oh my goodness, did I say that? Is this, is but, it's, but it's an interesting one that. because it felt to me like Penny Morden was making her bid to be the next leader of the Conservative Party mm. you know, before Rishi Sunak, as, as like the warmer pants, if you like, to Rishi, um, nakedly making a play for it. But it did go down well with the crowd. But is that indicative, do you think, Anna, of the fact that the Conservatives are now so kind of listless? They're just looking to anybody with, strong, with a strong voice who's standing up there and showing some enthusiasm, because Rishi, by the look of this poll, he, he says great stuff, but he doesn't set people's emotions on fire. Yeah, he's, he, he just can't shake off the sort of bank manager image, I'm afraid. Uh, and and it, it is hard. It's, it's Public speaking, being really good at public speaking is an absolute skill. Um, uh, what did you think of his wife? Yes. I mean, was that nauseating, or was it, was it I sweet? I liked it. Yeah, did you like it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was very saccharine, I thought. Mm. That's what I um, thought, too. What did you think? It's quite nice to see a, a real human being, I think, speak. But, I mean, I'm, I'm basing him on his policy rather than share, who he shares his bed and house with. Yes, but, and, they and, had and made again, the, but they've made the decision to have her yeah. come on stage, be part of this new election but campaign, it, really, it, and it, introduce him. It's this whole thing about appealing to women. Uh, but I think it's quite patronising to women that they're only going to like somebody on the basis of their wife, as if that we're still in the sort of 1950s. I, I think it's a... a it was it was a it was a PR play, but I was interested in his policies, and I didn't see enough in his policies. I'm not sure people are lying awake, desperate to ban smoking or tweak with, uh, you know, degree names and, and names of degrees and things. Mm. I didn't think there was enough in there for me to for me to go yes, Rishi. I thought it was interesting with his, with his wife because there was a couple of pieces out last week, and you, you, you no doubt know about this, that they're all saying women are going to decide the next general election, who, who, women, who women choose to opt for. Is cynically rolling your wife out, you think, part of that kind of attempt? to make yourself look more friendly towards the female vote? Well, it's all... I, I wouldn't be surprised if Keir Starmer starts doing it. Um, I, I think his wife is quite charismatic, too. Look, uh, all politics is, is PR. It's all about how politicians are packaged. But as Andy said correctly, at the end of the day, voters aren't stupid. They, they, they can see... They can like someone in the same way that, you know, Sarah Brown, and she's Gordon Brown. Mm. No one said, oh, that's terrible. Everyone sort of liked her. But at the end of the day, at the polling booth, that's not the thing that's going to count. Well, you say that, but Sherry Blair was a huge part, I think, of, of the Blair machine. You know, the fact she was she was so well educated and well thought of. I, I thought at the time, what, a left wing human rights lawyer. No, but she had, she added a lot to to. Um, but what I'm saying is, you know, Tony Blair made a huge play of his wife <laughs> as part of the team. Yes, he did. And maybe we're, we're going to see a bit more. Of I that. think we, I think we're going to see an awful lot yeah. more of Mrs. Sunak. Yeah. I think they've decided she's a vote winner.